Diffraction from oblique gratings. We start our discussion by looking at, in this case, a hexagonal diffraction grating. And it has a refractive index in above the diffraction grating in the reflection region, in ref, and in the substrate or the transmission region, a refractive index of NTRN for uh, N refractive index transmission region. Now, while we're looking at a hexagonal array here, there's nothing I'm going to talk about that requires this to be exactly a hexagon or hexagonal array. So it can be any sort of oblique symmetry. So somewhere at the start of this analysis, we have to define the direct lattice vectors of the grating. Now, since this is a hexagonal array, this is how we will define our two direct lattice vectors for the hexagonal array. So if you had a square array or something other than a hexagon, of course, we would have to change these direct lattice vectors. Now, don't mistake these for the reciprocal lattice vectors. Those are things that we will calculate in a little bit. So we use these direct lattice vectors to describe the symmetry of the grating in the plane of the grating. Now let there be an incident wave on this grating. And if we define this incident wave with the spherical angles theta and phi, we can calculate our incident wave vector this way. So out front, we have our magnitude, which is our free space wave number K naught, times the refractive index in the reflection region. That's where the source wave is coming from. And then of course, we have our X component, our Y component and our Z component. And these equations come from converting spherical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. We take our incident wave and we decompose this into a, a normal component and a tangential component. So our tangential component is along the, the same plane as the grating. And the normal component is, of course, straight up and down. For the purposes of calculating the direction of the diffraction orders, it is only the tangential component of the wave vector that matters. The normal component doesn't enter into this at all. And that's because it's the tangential component that really sets up the, the periodicity of the wave that's incident onto the grating. And it's that period that mixes with the period of the grating that gives us all the sum and difference frequencies, and that leads to the diffraction orders. So for the direction, we just look at the tangential component of the incident wave vector. At this point, we need our reciprocal lattice vectors. And so we calculate these straight from the direct lattice vectors. So we end up with a capital T1 and a capital T2. Uh, to make those different than the lowercase t1 and lowercase t2, which were the direct lattice vectors. Now, if we're looking at the grading, this is the, the real space, the direct de device. And if we look at t1 and t2, it may not really make much sense, their orientation. And that's because they're really part of the reciprocal lattice. And we're looking at a picture of the direct lattice. So don't worry about the capital T1 and capital T2 not really pointing from the center of one unit cell to the other or the magnitudes not really corresponding to, to the lattice. They're really reciprocal lattice quantities and we're looking at the direct lattice. But we do need the reciprocal lattice vectors for our next step. So the incoming wave mixes with the period of the grading, and we get a whole bunch of sum and difference frequencies. In fact, we get an infinite number, and I'm only showing something like 25 of them here. And here's the critical part. Here's how they mix. So we have our diffraction order, and since this is a cross grading, we really have two integers, P and Q, and they can be anything from minus infinity to positive infinity. But we have our incident wave vector, and then minus an integer p times reciprocal lattice vector t1 minus q times reciprocal lattice vector 
T2. So really, we're just adding and subtracting integer multiples of our reciprocal lattice vector and then adding that to the tangential component of our incident wave vector. That gives us a large set of vectors that are all in the plane of the grating. These are the tangential components of all of our diffraction orders. In fact, both the reflected and the transmitted diffraction orders will have these same tangential components. It's only the normal components of the reflected and transmitted that will differ. So what are the normal components? Let's look first at the reflected wave. Since we have the tangential component and we know the refractive index of the medium that those waves are in, we can calculate the normal component from the dispersion relation. In this case, we solve the dispersion relation for the normal component, and it's really the magnitude of the wave vector squared minus the tangential component. Now, if we look at this equation, we have a subtraction happening here. That means we could get a negative number in the square root, which means this normal component can become imaginary. When we have a normal component that's imaginary, that means it's not really a wave, it's pure decay away from the grading as we go upward. And in fact, that's an evanescent field. And over in the grading, the ones that are not evanescent, where we have a purely real valued normal component, I'm showing those as upward vectors. When the normal component becomes imaginary, I'm just showing those as those straight lines to remember that they're not really waves that are going to be transporting power up and away from the diffraction gradient. They're evanescent and cut off. Now let's combine the tangential and normal components and see what we have. So what we see is the lowest order few of those diffraction orders are actually waves and they carry energy away from the diffraction grating. They propagate away from the diffraction grating and they fan out into a bunch of different directions. The fields that are cut off are evanescent and I'm drawing those as decaying waves. And one thing you'll notice, the higher order diffraction orders that are cut off actually decay quicker. So we can look at a low order diffraction or this one and it decays relatively slowly. But if we go out here, or even here and look at a super high order one, the decay is very quick. So it's the lowest order cutoff modes that have the slowest decay, although they still usually decay pretty quickly. We can do the same thing for the transmitted waves. We'll calculate the normal component of the wave vectors for the transmitted diffraction orders also from the dispersion relation. The difference is now, now we're inside the substrate, it has a different refractive index, and so we have a different refractive index here. But it's still essentially the magnitude of the wave vector is fixed, so magnitude squared minus the tangential component squared gives us the normal component. Like what happened for the reflected waves, there's a minus sign under this square root, and that means that we can get a negative number, which means the transmitted diffraction orders can also be cut off and evanescent. So I'm showing the non-cutoff orders as the downward blue arrows, and those non-cutoff diffraction orders will carry power downward. The straight thin lines, those are the ones that are cut off and they have a, an imaginary normal component. Let's look at the tangential and normal components. We'll put them together. So we have our composite wave vectors and we can see we have a bunch of transmitted waves uh, going off in, in different directions, going downward, but we also have these cutoff modes that are evanescent. And just like before, the higher order modes, like the large values of P and Q, they will decay more quickly. Let's look at both together. Remember, they share the same tangential components. It's only the normal component that differs. The normal component we calculated from the dispersion relation, which had the refractive index of the medium there. 
Now, in this case, the reflection side and the transmitted side has a different refractive index. And if we look at this animation close enough, we will actually see some cases where the reflected wave is cut off, but the transmitted wave is not. And for example, let's, uh, let's look right here. So here is a reflected that's cut off, so it's evanescent. But if we look right below it, the transmitted wave is not cut off. And so in the high index medium, we will have more diffraction orders. And for the same diffraction order above and below, the ones below will have a smaller angle. Here is a summary then of how we can calculate the, dif the direction of the diffraction orders. So step one is to calculate the lattice vectors. Now I put a, a question mark in here for T1 and T2 because I'm saying this, I'm trying to keep generic. We don't know whether this is going to be a square symmetry or hexagonal, at least I don't. But once you know, then you can write the direct lattice vectors. From there, we can calculate the reciprocal lattice vectors from the direct lattice vectors. And now we know everything about the symmetry of the lattice, both the direct lattice and the reciprocal lattice. Step two, we'll calculate the incident wave vector that can have any angle theta and phi. At that point, we don't need information of the normal component. We only need the tangential component because that's what really defines the periodicity of the wave in the plane of the grating. At this point, we calculate the expansion. And so we expand about the tangential component of the wave vector, and we expand in the directions of T1 and T2, the reciprocal lattice vectors. So we add and subtract all the integer multiples of T1 and T2. And as I mentioned, there's really an infinite number of diffraction orders. It's just usually those lower order few that are the actual propagating waves, and everything else is cut off. And the super high order ones tend not to get much energy coupled into them. And that's why in simulations, we can ignore those higher orders. So we now have this expansion of the tangential wave vector components. And the last thing we can do is calculate the normal components. And that's from the dispersion relation. So while the transmitted and reflected diffraction orders share the same tangential components, they have very different normal components, which is what we're showing here. And so we actually have to calculate the normal components separately. But once you have the tangential and normal components, you now have the wave vectors of all of the diffraction orders. And that's all there is to it for calculating the directions.